Welcome to another episode of Sawdust Nation, episode 88. And today we got a special treat for you. We have Victor from Wim Designs here, and we're going to talk shop with him in a minute. But let me introduce the other three hosts with Nick from MPG Creations, the stash that just keeps on going, and Nap from Nap's Nutty Works. Well, it's all in the name, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out. And then myself, Josh from North Country Woodworking. We're going to revisit Workbench Con. We're going to look in our shops and we're going to see what's going on in Victor's Garage. So look at our uh, sponsors and start there. All right. Thanks for kicking it on over to me, Josh. We want to thank PWNCNC for their continued support. Daniel over there has got a lot of new stuff, a lot of cool stuff going on in his little workshop. So check them out, pwncnc.com. If you want 5% off your order of anything on the website, use promo code SAWDUSTNATION981. That's right, folks. We keep it simple. Use promo code SAWDUSTNATION981. And we also want to thank Total Boat for their continued support. Check them out at TotalBoat.com for their best epoxy experience. Uh, if you want a 10% off promo code for the Total Boats, go ahead and slide into the Sawdust Nation podcast DMs or shoot us an email and we'll get you hooked up. And last but not least, we want to thank the patrons. By the way, we have two new patrons this month. Uh, we want to say, hey, thank you to Ron Childress from Splinter Customs and Matt Wackerly from Wacky Works. Um, thanks, guys. We appreciate you guys uh, contributing to the Patreon account. Strap in because uh, it's going to be a wild ride coming up on our 100th episode pretty soon. So uh, with that being said, I don't got anything else. So we're going to kick it on over to Victor from Wim Designs and see what he's got going on in his shop. Victor. Hey, guys. So uh, what I have going on in my shop, let's see, it is my shop. I have a uh, 12-foot bench that I'm building that's going to house a 3x6 CNC. Um, I also just got a Ohmtech laser up on the, on the bench uh, underneath. I have slide out drawers that's going to house um, a planer, a jointer, a miter saw, and a, uh, a tool to be named later. Um, that's just on the bench. Well, yes, we, we can't give everything right away. Um, I want you guys to have me back. So uh, that's on my first bench. On the, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to learn the laser. Nap, I'll, I'll be hitting you up, I'm sure. Uh, I also have a, a, a CNC, which I'm taking, and I know that you guys didn't know about this, but I'm actually thinking about running that off the ceiling like another person that you guys know, one of your uh, influencers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I see the look from, from uh, Nap. Yeah, I'm thinking of actually having two CNCs in the shop and do it in such a way that I'd be able to have smaller stuff on the on the X carve and then have the three by six. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes down the road. Um, but that's pretty much what's going on in my shop right now. What's going on on yours now? Before we get into that, I, I do want to know a little bit more. I know some of sure. us might know what kind of laser you have, but for the audience, what laser did you get? Is it a 60 watt, 80 watt? Uh, I, I did a 50 watt just for size and okay. space in the shop. Um, as a matter of fact, that is actually good, a good question, Josh, because I, I was thinking, and I know that I haven't even really done any, any <laughs> burning of any sort yet, but I'm wondering, do you know if Ohm Tech actually, if I would be able to upgrade to a 60 watt down the road? Because I know some of them you can, I know some lasers you can, and some you can't. I'm not sure with the 50 watt. Okay. So I got to take this one. So most of the Omtech, or I want to just say Omtech, most lasers, they're built with um, a board that can handle certain capacities of laser tube. Uh, that would be research you'd ha I'd have to do as far as whether that can be, but I'm fairly certain with a power supply upgrade as well as possibly a board upgrade, you can up it to 60. But then again, it also goes based on the size of the tube. So I don't know if the 50 is the same as Nick's as far as actual oh, size. I thought it was hey, so check it out. Uh, I spoke with Robert Minns from Omtech about uh, upgrading my laser tube. He's like, you can upgrade the tube, but you also have to upgrade the power supply, and theoretically, that should work by itself uh, with those two items. Now, do they make higher, you know, higher tubes or higher capacity tubes for your size machine? I don't know, but if they don't, there is. I don't know if you've seen some of the lasers that are 
just around that they have like a little boom sticking out the side. And that's the tube because the tube's so darn long, it sticks out the side and they have a cover mm-hmm. for it. So uh, it is a possibility. I would have to get with Omtech to make sure, or at least, you know, ask customer service if it is a possibility before you start investing in that. Does the mirrors change because of the wattage? No. No, so the mirrors literally, as it as it, I guess, is implied, all I do is reflect the beam. Uh, I know there's two different types of mirrors you can get. One is the regular, like like look in a mirror, like type of mirror. But then there's also like a, a yellow. I don't know what the yellow coating is, but it's a specific coated mirror uh, that's meant to just last longer because eventually mirrors do go bad. Uh, after so many times uh, being used, but that's like we're talking. You need to use it for uh, like hours and hours and hours. We're talking thousands of hours before you ever have to replace them. So I don't think you have to actually change out the mirrors for that. Oh, is that the ones that Nick had? No, the, the, my mirrors are stock, but mine are regular. I I don't oh, I don't really see a need to to change the mirrors yet. I did jack up my my lens, <laughs> the dirty lens so, you had. Yeah, so it, it just got to the point where it's. I mean, it still works. I just have to. I, I got a new lens just because it was clean and new. And I cleaned the old one, but it just wasn't. It was marred from the laser beam. So yeah. Did the new lens end up working out pretty good though? Uh, I haven't installed it yet, so I'm sh- we'll we'll see. <laughs> I've been so <laughs> probably. So will. what I've been doing is before I before I cut. Really, etching wood is is not so bad if you're doing like a plaque, but before I cut things. I'll go ahead and go and clean my my lens every time now, and I'll use the denatured alcohol to clean it with a Q-tip. It's just become one of those things where I don't want to risk not being able to cut through something on that first pass. I use uh, one sixteenth inch acrylic a lot, so I've been cutting through that, and, and whatever the off gas is from that just gunks up the lens. So that's what I've been mm-hmm. doing. Well, that actually, I, I, I have one more question then for that. Um, as far as I, I know that I asked you uh, yesterday, Nap, as far as uh, ash, um, etching ash, and yes, I can see Nick, Nick's mind going, but as far as the different types of woods, would you suggest darker woods for etching? And, and as far as the 50 watt, I know I'm hitting you with a lot, but as far as the 50 watt, I was thinking about um, half an inch cutting through um, hardwood. Would yes, that be able to handle that? Okay. So on that note, can you cut through that? Mm-hmm. Yes. The answer is yes. However, you have to have damn near perfect alignment. So one okay. of the things with the laser that a lot of people don't understand is that, yes, it etches great, cool. You really don't need to be perfect aligned to etch even clearly. But if you don't have a good alignment, your beam is going to be fat, Okay. And it's not, it's just going to burn more than it's going to cut. The key is the smaller the, um, the laser beam, the better it's going to cut. Uh, and that also goes with focus as well. So you'll have to do a, what's called a ramp test, which you and I can go offline and talk about ramp tests. We can even video call and I'll run you through the paces uh, so that we make okay. sure you're all set Great. up. I have the 45 watt and it, it cuts through half inch stuff. Anything further than that, it's not going to work, but. Um, you're going to be very capable of what you have. Oh, yeah. I'll say real quick, and I'll just finish off with that. At the end of the day, like Nick has a 60, and uh, it's not much higher, but you got to imagine he's not using the full 60 watts, if you will, to cut through his stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you, yeah, you'll be more than capable. But my shop, oh, Lord, it's gone. Where did it, where did it go? Oh, yeah, my shop. So I have a lot going on. I actually took a week of leave. Um from my from my day job in the military just to just to decompress um get ready for this move uh, i gotta say I, I do think the ig community and all those folks out there that are either in north dakota or have been to north dakota who have been reaching out and saying yeah it's got this that and the other because i'll tell you what connections do pay off uh, i've already been talking to uh, some folks as far as uh what kind of lumber yards are out there how much things are uh, it is a little more expensive for certain things up there, so I am already getting ready to compensate for that. Uh, so that's been kind of the forefront of my mind is this move. Uh, but as far as like production in the shop, I talked about the lull last week. Well, that lull is now gone. Uh, all of the sudden, it's like they listen to the podcast or they just you know the ears are burning. 
uh, because now I'm getting jobs left and right, uh, jobs that are due next week, jobs that are due by Friday. Totally fine, though. It helps me uh, pay for a machine that doesn't even exist in my shop yet, which honestly is the ultimate goal. Because when that thing does arrive at the shop, I would like to just say, like, hey, it's paid off already. And I haven't even set it up yet. Um, with me leaving in June, now June 1st is when I'm leaving, I may actually still set the one finity up uh, just to have it ready to rock and roll. So when I do move, I know how it's going to go together. There's not going to be like a week or two of getting things dialed in and whatnot. So I'm still really excited to get this one finity set up. Uh, but jobs that I got going on. So I've been doing a lot of lasering lately. As Nick said, uh, I've been itching to get things on that rotary. Uh, I'm using a Rotoboss rotary, the big boy. Uh, it's got the adjustments on both sides. They have like three different ones. They got like a low profile one, a junior, and then there's the big one. That's the one I have. Uh, I did, um, let's see, I think I did 16 Arctic tumblers uh, recently. Some half gallon ones and some 36 uh, ounce ones, which were pretty cool. Gave me uh, some time to play with the settings, so now I've got that dialed in. I've been doing beer mugs, as you all saw from the folks that won. Uh, Robert Lee over there at Br- Brush Fire, he won the mug, so I'll get... Brush Fire Freedom, yeah, Brush Fire Freedom. 1776. Yep. I, I couldn't you. remember the whole thing, so thank you for, for catching me up. <laughs> but uh, he won that, so I get to go ahead and throw this guy back on the rotary and etch his logo and stuff on there, so more excuses for me to play with the rotary. Uh, so that's been a huge hit lately, uh, just because I've been pushing it hard lately. As soon as I got that thing, I was like, hey, I can do this now. I can do all this cool stuff, start pushing things out. I've been giving promo Arctics out so people can show it around. And I have gotten some orders based off of that, which has been pretty cool. Um, I'm doing some simple going away uh, squadron from the base military, tra- military training side of the house. Hit me up, said, hey. You know, a lot of people get these extravagant things, but we want to make sure that everyone's getting something. Like, you know, let's just say someone drops the ball, they have something just lined up. So I'm making some sword plaques with uh, coin inlays and a basic placard with their name and stuff on it. Uh, just, you know, just on the ready so they have them. Uh, I did uh, some stuff for <laughs> my mom. And uh, I did I did etch that stuff. Uh, is it a cancer? And some glasses for a dog. So she shows dogs and stuff and grooms dogs for shows. And it's for that this association uh, that she is a part of. So they're going to be doing that for a silent auction. A while back, and there's my kid. Oh, thanks, dude. He brought me something to drink. I didn't even ask him, but he brought me something to drink. Thanks, dude. Go watch cartoons. Okay. Um, I made a, a while back, I made a maple, wenge, and paduk um, flag. So I, I've been having a hard time selling that thing. And honestly, someone asked uh, if I had something maybe to give away for a silent auction at a grade school uh, that has a hard time getting funds. So they're doing a silent auction to raise funds for like their, their youth programs. Uh, so I just went ahead and donated it. I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, you know, we talk about, you know, community and, you know, we talk about business. And in this in this case, it was a win for the community here in San Antonio. Uh, so they'll go ahead and get to auction that off to uh, a uh, lucky recipient and then let's see what else have i made or got going on i had ben over beach time woodwork so the patrons you see the hat i have on my head he showed up uh i gave him some laser help laser engraved uh end grain cutting board for him and uh helped him join some stuff up uh, he we spent a couple hours just chatting having a good time uh, so i appreciate him coming over and dropping off his hat as well as two koozies Uh, Because he knows I like to drink beer. So he's like, here, here's some koozies. He's got a lot of cool merchandise uh, that he has, like, just to kind of show who he is. Um, And then anything else? I got a Texas plaque. I got one of my infamous hat boards that I'm actually altering to be a little bit better uh, as far as height-wise and weight and just more um, functional to move. So to be able to move the hat and stuff like that. So that would be cool. But really, boys... As far as everything else goes, everything's been going pretty smooth in the shop. It's dirty. Uh, if everyone saw Josh's shop on the Soda Station Instagram, mine's about like that. It's pretty destroyed. Looks like a tornado hit it, but it's going to get clean here eventually. Um, but yeah, that's about all I got. So, Nick, what you got, man? Wow, oh, yeah. So, uh, I finished up a large project last week. I'm just going to get this out of the way. 
otherwise I'm going to explode. I finished up a large project last week. I had a like a three foot by two foot by two foot trunk made out of walnut, laser etching, custom etches, and blue flock fleece lined with um, a tray inside. With the, the tray was a shadow box as well as the uh, the 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 lid was a shadow box. Gorgeous hardware. Um, I finished it up. It was just in the nick of time for the person's retirement ceremony, and it's not my fault. Uh, it was just a late, it was a late order for that particular item. And, uh, I shipped it off and UPS destroyed it. So it, it was clearly, it was clearly an act of disregard for all of the labels I put on the packaging marked fragile, marked, you know, do not drop marked with orientation markings. And I marked this box up good with all these labels and I have pictures and all that stuff to prove. Um, but some, some guy at UPS kicked, he must've kicked that thing off the back of a UPS truck multiple times, like without disregard for anybody else's personal property. With with without any regard for the labels, the the orientation arrows, the fragile stickers, the do not drop label, all that stuff. And this 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 Stugatz, he made this thing crack down like the back it blew out the back of the freaking box. It made it made this absolute it destroyed everything. So this box is like, mind you, this box is like over a grand worth of work and materials and time and excuse my language to make. And, uh, one person jacked it up for, for not only me, they jacked it up for UPS. They jacked it up for this person's retirement ceremony. So I I'm not happy with UPS right now. I don't give a damn if you're getting $3 less an hour. If you're paid to do a job, you do it the right way. All right. I know UPS is having issues with they're they're going through pay cuts for their part time employees. I don't care. I don't care. But if I could find this person, I would love to have a conversation with them in a closed room. Let's put it that way. All right. There you go. This this person who who thinks that uh, that they're just on shift to to move move air freight or move freight, uh, and it doesn't matter how the package arrives. So uh, with that being said. Mm-hmm. I have coordinated with – and it was heading up to Josh's neck of the woods, by the way. That's where it was delivered. Um, they got the box to the ceremony right before they would have presented it. They opened the, the, the package, which was destroyed, and they discovered that everything was absolutely in pieces. So they could not present it at the ceremony. It, it arrived literally like with that much time left. Uh, you know, It would have been perfect if the thing was you – know, if it was – you know, intact. Anyway, so the folks I know dropped it off at Josh's house. It's sitting in his garage. Josh is going to chop chop it up and send it back to me. And uh, usable usable pieces of, of lumber. He's going to send me the hardware back. I think Josh is going to help me out and put the the shadow boxes back together. We'll see. I don't know. And then I'm going to do anything in my power to give you a hand, man, because that's unacceptable. And then I got to rebuild this this box, and I'm going to ship it in two parts this time. I'm going to ship the the bottom half, and I'm going to ship the top half separately, which would like the lid and the base. Uh, this way, mm-hmm. this way, there's less of a chance the whole thing gets destroyed for one, and for two, there's less of uh, a freight fee. Because not only that, to add insult to injury, it costs three hundred dollars to ship this thing. You know, I mean, three hundred dollars of the customer's money on top of all the other money that they spent getting, you know. I, I I had a very small margin on this because I knew these people and I do a lot of business for these people. So it ended up biting me in the rear. I get it. Uh, I probably should have charged more, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. I was, I was trying to, you know, when you have people that you know and you like and your, your friends and all that stuff, you try to help them out some. Hey, Nick, I have a yeah. question. I'm sorry. I, sorry to interrupt you. 
I mean, I haven't sold anything like you guys, um, but I mean, what's your recourse in this? I mean, uh, have you ran into this before? I've had minor minor issues before where UPS has never absolutely just like destroyed an item for me. I've seen damage on items, which was minor, and, and I pack it pretty good. Typically, I have everything nice and snug, the corners taken care of. Um, the, the edges taken care of and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not a dunce when it comes to packaging things up. I work at uh, like my job in the air force before I'm my current position. I was, I was in freight movement. So I saw what happened to, to items, you know, accidents do happen. Right. But good. So for someone that has it in their garage and have, I expected it, I've done uh, plenty of, um, I don't think I've done a video with you yet, but I've done at least a half dozen or more pictures and gone over with it. And the majority of it is literally, I broke at the wood, not at the glue line or anything like that. So you're having walnut break. Yeah. I mean, like. It's it, a hardwood. It, it's not like pine snapping. <laughs> there's, there's screws that are bent. Like it's something had to happen that was pretty big to this thing for it to have gone through as much damage as it has and come out the other side. Um, I didn't get to see the packaging. I, I can only imagine what that looked like. I mean, like obviously as a collective group, I think we need to find a good way to go about shipping our larger projects because this isn't just affecting Nick. It's affecting all of us because, A, you know, he's part of a community. And when something happens to a person, a part of the community affects us all. And we need to figure out, A, a good way to do this. B, you know, efficient and cost-effective way. So to I'm going to look. So first off, Josh, that being said, I'm going to look into the Amazon freight service because they, uh, okay. they have a service where you can ship through them. And they'll they'll move it instead of like a, a different 3PL. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know anything about it yet. I still got to look into it. Two, Victor, I'm my recourse, file a claim. Submit as much documentation as possible, pictures, video uh, of the packaging, video of the item, um, and any sort of information I can get to them. Uh, I I have filed the claim. I haven't heard I got a confirmation that it was received. I have not heard back from about it. I'm curious on what they're going to uh, a oh, do I can't and wait. if they're going to give you any issues. I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen, and this is because it's big business, and I'm just a little little dude, right? They're just going to be like, "Hey, you know, uh, too bad." You know, that's probably how they're going to play it. Like, uh, oh, you didn't package it correctly. Okay, well, yeah. Well, that's why you took the pictures before you lo- you gave it to them. You have proof that you packed it correctly. Well, yeah, I took pictures before and after, and it. It doesn't matter how – in the end, with big companies like UPS, and especially the United States Postal Service, they're like – they're more gangster than the Gambino crime family. Let me tell you. You buy – insurance is the biggest fraud that you could ever buy from the United States Postal Service for one because they're going to tell you, oh, we lost your package and uh, it's too bad because you didn't package it correctly or we never knew it was in a, even in our system. We didn't scan it, blah, blah, blah whatever, right? It's just that's how they they work around it, and they're there they're there to make money. They're not there to lose money. They don't take they don't take accountability. Them and UPS as well. I know Mike Legregni from Veteran Woodco had something happen to one of his signs, and it got jacked up pretty Two. good. Two of them. Two. Yeah. So it got jacked up pretty good, and I'm pretty sure they told him to kick rocks. I'm pretty sure. And Mike does a fantastic job of packaging his stuff up. It is a, what do you want to call it? A cost of doing business at some point, but at, at another point, like I, I expect when I ship something out, I, I expect it to arrive damaged in some sort of way at, at and have a, a, a reasonable amount of um, damage that it can take for me to be like, okay, well, I can remake it and blah, 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 right? So like a chipped corner on a, on a plaque. Or like a, uh, I've had plenty of plaques with chipped corners, and usually I can fix those with some wood glue or whatnot, or I could just remake the darn thing. Not a problem. But this sort of catastrophic failure is unacceptable, and I'm not happy with UPS at all right now. 
So that being said, what can Brown do for you? What else you got going on in the shop, Nick? Uh, so <laughs> I hate to be the guy. I hate to be the I like I like talking about my shop and I like talking about I don't like to complain about like working in the garage or, or working in my shop and getting projects done because I really like what I do. But what I absolutely hate is negligence. But the rest of my projects are still I'm still pushing through on them. I have a, a, a fourth fighter wing over at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Their age unit just ordered 17 like plaques in the shapes of wrenches from me. That was cool. I'm working on those currently. I have like they have like a craftsman wrench look to them with the raised panel on the on the handle. If you know what I'm talking about. Um, mm-hmm. And then you know, obviously, on the handle is going to be where all the information is for the people that are departing the unit. And then. Um, I just shipped off a Spartan helmet to Germany through the post office. By the way, if you're shipping to an APO address, the post office is really your only – it's really one of your only options. Um, you can go through UPS and stuff. It's just it's just a lot more expensive, and there's still no guarantee that it's not going to wind up j- jacked up. But uh, if you check out my Instagram, you can – at NPG Creations, uh, you can see the uh, – you can see the trunk that I made – complete and intact before i thought it was i mean i don't like to 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 brag on my own stuff but i thought it was beautiful the wood grain was amazing um and then if you can see the spartan helmet as well i uh i shipped off a hdu weight plate that i made a while ago i think i might have talked about it before that was Mm -hmm. that's gone that's at 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 its destination that was kind of a cool build it was a bumper plate and then um i'm gearing up to complete another heraldry project for uh some folks at fort dix as well it's just a it's flat it's flat wood but it's it's going to be acrylic like an acrylic uh plaque that's large like probably 24 inches by by 18 or 20 inches where they're going to stick name plates on it uh as like a like when people leave they can they can go ahead and stick their names on it so they can you know remember these people but other than that, that's it. That's all I got. Just been doing this work thing. Tomorrow, actually, I get a chance. I get actually an opportunity to go help out with the San Antonio Food Bank. So that's going to be fun. Um, and uh, that's that's probably it. I, I'm going to kick it on over to Josh. I know the whole segment of me ranting and raving is over. I'm going to kick it on over to Josh, who just had an outstanding week at WorkbenchCon. And I know we're all we're all just clamoring to figure out what he what happened. So, Josh, tell us what happened in your shop, man. Before I hit on that, if anyone out there has a better uh, service out there they know of that could help us out, please reach out, and we can go ahead and the next time we record, announce that you know let's help the community out and let's uh, let's figure a better way to do business. Wrapping that up and going into this last week. So I got the opportunity last minute to go to WorkbenchCon. Now, this is something that uh, I myself a couple of years ago did not know exist, found out it existed. And then we've been talking about for, I don't know, for a couple of years now. So first of all, I want to thank uh, everyone here to help make that happen um, because <laughs> without you guys, um, I wouldn't help. So huge, huge thank you to you guys. I went down there to kind of check out and see what was going on so that uh, <clears throat> I was able to c- come back and kind of give you guys a, a peer into WorkbenchCon and see if it's worth going for you because it might not be for everybody. Um, I will say right off the bat for myself, it definitely worked out really well. I definitely would like to go again. Um, it is uh, something that uh, benefits myself in the podcast. So let's go ahead and dive into it, right? So I got there a day early. Um, if you guys follow along on the stories, you kind of see, you know, I flew in early and that was just to give myself uh, some time to kind of rest up, edit the podcast, what was left of it, and kind of, you know, look around for the convention center and just get my you know my feet wet the first day there um daniel from bwn cnc was supposed to join me but unfortunately weather kind of held him well held him at home so you go in the hotel you go to the second floor escalator you go up and you have uh some of the brands and then you walk into uh the conference room and there's more brands in the stage and kind of like where we were eating and kind of meeting for the most part so that first day was short because well it was just like a newbie meeting and then it was like just kind of a mingling time to get, you know get to know everybody and 
you know, talk to people, register and all this. That's also when you got your gift bag. And uh, they did throw me off a little bit and threw a lot of people off because normally when you register for something, they go by your last name. And uh, a thing to note is they went by the first name. So like you've seen people switching between lines like halfway through and it was just kind of funny. You know, that first day I got to meet a lot of great people. Uh, I got to meet uh, a lot of people I didn't know off Instagram a lot of people for the first time meeting and a lot of people I've been talking to for years. So even that short bit of time that started at four o'clock and I think it went to like six or seven, um, you know, you got really good interaction with makers from just around the country, even uh, from Canada. There's people from the United Kingdom. Um, there was makers coming in from everywhere. So it was really impressive. And from what I've been told this year was kind of, um, not as robust as previous years do because of COVID and stuff like that. So they limited the amount of makers and uh, the brands as well. Uh, the second day you go in and they had breakfast available for you. Lunch and breakfast are provided. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like another mingling time where you can sit down and have breakfast, talk to other makers, kind of get that interaction. And, <clears throat> and then they did have another speaker. And after that, uh, you kind of get released to your classes or the classes or uh, the briefs that you want to go to. And they had a really intuitive schedule where you could choose from a pretty good amount. And uh, all the classes that I went to, I definitely picked something up from. Um, I actually skipped out on two different classes just so I could talk to the brands and some of the makers that were not attending the classes because, A, they were either just coming in or they were just uh, – um, they're teaching the classes and theirs were not that day. And that was very beneficial to myself because I got one on one time with a lot of different brands and different makers throughout the community. So I got to form those relationships. Um, and that's very important for, you know, growing my page and growing the Sawdust Nation page because we're trying to make everyone aware of what we're trying to do. Um, so that, you know, second day was great. The last day was similar to the, uh, the second day. Um, but at the end, we had a, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, a ceremony, closing ceremony to wrap up uh, WorkbenchCon. And the difference there was uh, everyone got together. We watched uh, a new series that is coming out and actually hosts different makers from the community. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's called Pimp My Dear Camp. And uh, the name is might be changing, but we got to watch the pilot for it and just kind of see how legitimate makers from the community that we talked to that were there are actually going on television and doing some really amazing stuff. And then they had a small giveaway and, you know, it was suddenly done. Did uh, you get anything? You know, the three, four days. Did you win? Oh, I'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> no, not, I didn't get anything from the giveaway, but um, that three, four day event went by so fast because it was from the moment you woke up to the moment that you went back to your hotel room, you are just forming relationships with brands, with people. You're, you get to talk shop for like three days. Like, I don't know about you gentlemen, yeah, but when right. I, you know, my wife likes listening to uh, me talk shop. But there's a point there where she's like, you know, like I'm done and I can talk shop. And that's one of the reasons we do the podcast forever. So, you have a bunch of makers that are just wanting to talk shop. And it was just a great experience for that. So to that's kind of the layout of everything. But let's go back and kind of revisit why it's beneficial to some people and not to others. Now, you got to imagine so most of these classes revolve around businesses or, you know, Instagram and social media. If you were just a woodworker that is a hobbyist that doesn't care about the social media or business aspect, it might not be for you unless you really want to go to just experience and meet some of these individuals that you see on social media. Now, for those that have a business and are trying to do the social media aspect like myself, Nick and Nap and Victor, I, I'm assuming at some point you're going to roll into that. At some point, um, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting to go because the classes, they kind of, they hit every point. They go from the beginner all the way up to the advanced, and they try to do it in such a way that everyone gets a little bit of something from each class. Um, I know personally, there were some classes where like, you know, intermediate, I was doing, you know, I got the stuff I needed and they started going more advanced. And at this point in time, 
I'm not there yet. And I didn't really care for the material they were sending my way because it was where I was at. And the best thing about these is you can go in to another one while another uh, class is going on. It was expected for people to leave and come in at different time intervals because they knew how they set up the classes. Um, so that, that's a takeaway. If you're planning on going, know that what the classes are about. Know what it's more beneficial for. Um, some of the great things from WorkbenchCon, well, the grab bag. The grab bag alone, you got a, a variety of really great stuff from different brands that attended or you know were sponsors of the uh, conference. Um, you know, just some of the stuff you can see. Well, I did do an unpacking on in, uh, Instagram that you can go ahead and reference, and I go through basically everything that was in the uh, grab bag. Um, so I'm not going to get into it here because you can go ahead and do that on your own time, but I will say there was a lot of great stuff in there. Um, but it doesn't end there throughout the conference. The brands give away certain things. They do giveaways off the entire time. So you could be winning stuff and you go home. You you might want to pack another suitcase because I seriously, I actually ruined my suitcase packing everything in it. It was just completely full and the zippers don't zip right anymore. So unfortunately that suitcase had its last trip. Um, my book bag, same way. I actually came back with a bundle of wood in my book bag and like a Izzy Swan quick connector. And just, it was so full that when it went through security, <laughs> they actually pulled it aside, they opened it and they said, you got wood in here. I'm like, I sure do. <clears throat> And uh, it, it was great uh, because, you know, we have we have a couple sponsors and one of them being Totobo. I got to see the, their social media um, presence there. I got to see the people we've been talking to behind the curtain and actually have a conversation. And for me, person to person is always better. I mean, obviously, the podcast and um and Instagram is great. But when you can sit there and have that interaction, it's just it's another level. And I got to have that with so many different makers from every level, from the beginner to the people that have been on Instagram and have, you know, 140,000 uh, followers. And what I will say is I didn't run into one maker to one person that didn't want to talk that, you know, you could join any group. And it was like, you were part of that group from the beginning. There was always room for you. As long as you were willing to walk up and join the group. Um, if you were, didn't do that, well, then obviously you're never going to be part of that conversation. Um, so everyone was very welcoming. Everyone, you know, was willing to chat and kind of say hi, take a picture, um, you know, what have you. So those are some of the things I took away. I, I really like the classes. All the gear is great. The people are great. The food was it was relatively decent and um, the classes, if I did not mention that already. Now they did miss some marks and I don't know if this is uh, something that was just this year or in previous years as well. I really expected more brands. There were quite a few there, but I expected the whole floor to be full with different brands um, that, uh, you know, we all use and love. <clears throat> so it was really unfortunate to me that that was the case because I was looking forward to talking to some of the brands that, you know, sponsored some of the conference. Um, Cause to be honest, the first day and the second day, I've already talked to everybody. I've already uh, had that conversation, that meeting. And it was really just me going around after that and just kind of, you know, revisiting some of the things we talked about. Um, so having more brands there, I think would have been beneficial in the fact that, you know, every day I can hit a section and then, at, you know, I really feel like I fulfilled the entire time. Um, the classes were really good. But like I said, they're really business and social media uh, aimed. And for the people that were there and they just kind of want to experience it, um, I did hear that some people didn't enjoy the classes because of how they were aimed. And then. Uh, the closing ceremony was great, and I'm very happy for the makers that are making the television show. But they didn't really recap the work conference at all. It was more about the television show than it was about anything that happened that weekend. 
And it was very unfortunate because a lot of great stuff happened that weekend. And they do have, you know, hashtags and the social media aspect. They could have done a recap of, you know, that weekend and just then went into, uh, you know, the new uh, program that was coming out. So I really think they missed the mark there. Um, And there was a few other things. But for the most part, um, I will say I do this not necessarily for Instagram. I don't do this for the social media aspect. I do it for the people on Instagram and the community that's on Instagram. And for me, that was the biggest thing. I got to meet and talk to a lot of people, people that inspired me to get into the shop and gave me confidence to go ahead and and get a table saw and some of the tools and actually, you know, create the first steps in my journey to talking to you here. Um, so th- that was worth a lot to me. Now, is it worth a lot to you? And it it's $575 just for the ticket. And then you're talking about hotel. And then you're talking about, you know, airfare. If you need it, some people did drive down. But uh, it's an expensive weekend. But for me, I do believe uh, talking to the other three gentlemen here, it's worth every, every penny. Um, go ahead, Vic. Sorry. Um, you said it was five seventy five. I thought I saw the tickets were were nine something. Is that is it different classes? There that? are, yeah, there are two oh, okay. uh, ticket prices that you can get. There's the basic ticket for five seventy five, and mm-hmm. that includes everything and uh, breakfast and lunch. Then there's the marketing pass, which is uh, nine seventy five, and it includes like a social hour, and then the same stuff as uh, the five seventy five. Now, I will talk to this a little bit. Um, marketing pass, you're supposed to get a little bit more time with the vendors and stuff like that um, in the brands. If there was anything different, I did not see it um, because there was not a point or time where I entered a place I wasn't supposed to. Uh, there was no, um, there was VIP on back of some, some uh, makers' badges, but those, for what I saw, were teaching classes and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, for the majority of us, the marketing pass, I don't believe would be worth it. I think, uh, the 575, uh, price tag is more than enough and you would experience everything you would want to experience with that price. Um, which brings me into another, uh, little segment of, I think the tickets were overpriced. Um, we did get a lot of gear and we did get food and we did get a lot of stuff like that. But, uh, I think, we should be that work bench con should be centered around us. So the price shouldn't be as expensive for the ticket and uh, the sponsors that pay to be there should take over the rest of the cost. Um, but that's my personal opinion. And, and because the five seventy five is still a lot to you know take on. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot to unpack from that trip and a lot of things. I hope I can, uh, bring to the podcast and to my page and to everyone's pages uh, from that trip. So uh, hopefully you'll be seeing the fruits of uh, labor there uh, here in the coming months. How? All right. So they fed you. How many meals did they feed you per day? Um, well, two. You had breakfast and lunch. All right. And they did have uh, social hours afterwards where they'll give you uh, a couple tickets for alcohol. Um, so from my understanding, uh, in previous years past, most of the party would move into the lobby area and disturb guests. So I think what they did is they kept it all on the second floor in the convention area by giving us the two tickets and having like, a two open bars there and allow us to, uh, you know, they had a DJ and, uh, hang out. Um, so they kind of kept us away from the mass by getting us to stay in one area. Which is smart, um, but yeah, it, yeah, two meals a day, and uh, you know there'd be snacks and different stuff at different times. So it, I mean, the was the overall was the experience worth it? Like I said, for me, yes. For the podcast, absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, next year, you know it. Naps Naughty Works, MPG Creations, and North Country Woodworking. Going to Maker's Community or going to, uh, or not Maker's Camp. What is it called? Workbench Con. Well, 
<laughs> so all of us will be going to WorkbenchCon next year, and we're hoping to make uh, Maker's Camp as well. Because I will say, they do build off each other. There was a lot of people that met at Maker's Camp that already have formed relationships that went to WorkbenchCon and already knew each other. Okay. Um, I found that very fascinating, and I think uh, we really do need to try to hit both. Cool. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Victor, you going next year? I'm going to try to go to Maker's Camp. Oh, that's up in your neck of the woods, isn't it? It's still two hours away. Oh, that's not bad. That's that's a heck of a lot. Yeah, that's not bad. Road trip. (laughs) Road trip. Well, awesome, awesome. Josh, I'm I'm glad to hear about your experience. Um, But I was going to say, that's a lot of stuff we got going on, boys. What'd you get? Yes, we do. We can't talk about yeah. What, what did you get? We can't talk about what we got yet. No swag. Oh, for uh, for swag, um, I did I did do a, a reel or a live or something about it, but um, <clears throat> I got some Bessie clamps. Which um, which I got, ones? Uh, two. The uh, small F clamps. Nice. Um, I got uh, some <laughs> um RZ mask. Mm. Sorry, sorry, Nap. Um. I got uh, two. I got one tumbler for Workbench Con, and then uh, during the newbie meeting, I got a thirty-two ounce um, tumbler from there. Um, we know that wasn't full got, of water. <laughs> it was. It was a good tumbler. It worked well. <laughs> oh man, there's just so much. Um, we got a bunch of sandpaper. Uh, we got. I'm having trouble Total remembering boat? it all. Uh, Total Bolt actually provided the bag, so uh, that was their contribution to it. Um, we had, man, I, I I don't remember it all. Like there's, the, there's, there's so much that I packed and unpacked that like it's hard to remember what actually came in the initial bag. Um, that's that's just how much stuff I brought home. So you're just gonna have to go check out the post, and you're gonna have to check it out, and uh, you know, see from there. It's it's worth checking out. Honestly, I keep saying it, but uh, I had a really good time. I had a really good time. I wish you guys were there, of course, but uh, it was it was a nonstop weekend, and you know most people needed a couple of days to wind down after. I definitely uh, I slept for like a day and a half. So yeah, but we all know that's not from just workbench con. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good yes, wind it down. was yeah. mostly workbench con. <laughs> uh, I did get the opportunity to go check out uh, Wacky Works, Matt shop uh we met up and we got a nice steak and uh went down and checked out the shop and man i tell you what his shop layout was amazing i got to see the journeyman the one finney journeyman for the first time in person that thing is a beast um and just the i love the layout of the shop he's really thought through most of uh his layout and the flow and like the lighting in there was just amazing and if you guys didn't see, I did post about uh, when I was there, he showed me some old, old growth pine and we were talking about it and we lined up a whole bunch of different pieces, regular pine, old growth, um, what was it, maple and uh, walnut. And we took a picture of the end grain and I'm like, you know what, I should post this on uh, Instagram and see if people can guess it. And it turned into a small giveaway. And you know what? It took uh, two days for people to guess it. And the second day I posted the face screen and it just so happened um, the individual that uh, won it, he just got some old growth pine. So that's why he was able to recognize it is because he was literally staring at the post and looking at the stuff that he got, put two, two together. And it was just it was just there. He was he was the first one to get it. He was following uh, Wacky Works, and he won. And that was uh, Mick Kin Creations. Um, and I got to talk to him for a little bit, and he was super stoked. He won a fifty dollar gift card to Home Depot. So that's awesome. I think uh, I'll be doing that every once in a great great while because I'm not made of money, but <laughs> I think it's a great giveaway to get out there and uh, just talk about wood, you know, because. That's a strength that I think we all should have and develop is identifying wood species. That's true. So um, I will be talking more about the brands that were there um, later on. 
in different episodes because uh, hopefully they'll have uh, a part to play in future episodes as well. Did you? And maybe and maybe even that hundredth episode. Who knows? So, oh yeah. On mm, on your yep. trip into Atlanta, so did you end up getting to stop by the Pink Pony at all? <clears throat> <laughs> no. What about uh? Okay, so did you see the big chicken at all? No, I didn't see no big okay, chicken. Okay, so there's it's a it's a landmark, all right? And it's like there's like it's an it. No, it's a big chicken. It's it's uh I don't know if it's Chick Fil A or whatever, but they have a big chicken in an intersection, or it's at an intersection. If you ask anybody around there, and say, "Hey, where's the big chicken?" They'll point you in that direction. So, I was not aware of there being a large chicken in the area. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty exhausted from both the flight because uh, I took off here at four, and uh, by the time I made it there, it was like I don't know, ten o'clock or something like that. I got to my hotel. My room wasn't ready, so like I was, I walked around. It was it was a long day. Um, I was pretty exhausted, and I did not see any bigger okay. chicken. Well, next time you make it down that way, make sure you check out either the Big Chicken or you head over to the Cheetah Lounge or the Pink Pony, and they'll get you straightened out. But hey, so I think we got time for one question. <laughs> What's the question? Yeah, throw, throw the question. So question that i haven't seen uh recently is from a jeremy rock stro and we'll put that in the mentions so folks can uh, find this person and give them a follow uh is what to do in your first year as a maker that is just starting out victor what do you say well what i say is the first year you need to figure out and and nap actually helped me with this a little while ago find to figure out what it is that you want to do what do you want to go CNC? Do you want to do laser? Do you want to do woodworking? You know, hand tools. Exactly. Do you want to do a little bit of everything? Because if you don't know what you want to do, you're going to spend a lot of money on tools and find out that that's not really what you want to do. Um, the other thing, the first year is you have to figure out your layout of your shop, and you all and all three of you, I'm sure, can understand that. Yeah. Josh, you having a small shop, you know, I know, I know you, Nick, and, and you, Nap, you have bigger shops, but still, I'm sure the flow of the shop is, is a huge thing. I mean, I've been in my, my one car and I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. So that's what I say. So Victor, with that, so you've been talking to us a lot about this stuff and I see you're still trying to figure out, but what direction are you going to go? Like, have you kind of started finally figuring out? Cause you got a laser now, like, Laser and, and CNC are probably going to be the most that, that I, I mean, I want to do woodworking as far as hand tools. I, I have hand tools. I've learned that not always the most expensive tool is the best tool. Um, I, I picked up, I picked mm-hmm. up a drill press, uh, a Delta uh, drill press, um, a, a bench mount, put a new switch on it works perfectly. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. And that's another thing that, I mean, I could tell everybody, and I'm sure you guys have said it too, you know, these tools are expensive and you can go into debt really quick. You know, I mean, I would love to, I know Nap, you got a great deal on a saw stop. You know, um, for me, a saw stop, I don't see, I, again, one car, you know, my, my rigid will do just fine. I'm actually even thinking about possibly getting rid of it and and just going with uh, track saw. So these are all things that I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out myself. But as far as your original answer, not definitely laser and CNC. I, I just love the creative side of it because I can go in, I can go into the software, I can design it, figure it out in my head, and, and that's it. You know, I, I definitely feel that woodworking, the other tools have a place in the shop, but I, I believe those are the two that are going to, going to win out over everything else now i got i gotta say and victor I, i'm picking on you a little bit here but um i talked to you about this i would say a couple weeks ago when i think of a maker so there's definitions of makers okay like everyone has their own thing but when we say you're the mad scientist of makers you literally have so many ideas and you put and you make them come to life like right now this big bench you're making come to life like you're gonna house so many different tools in this thing and i know you're proud of it but out of all the things you've created and thought about and just put through the paces, what is the one thing you're most proud of making thus far? Oh, God. Um, actually, that bench, 
the reason I say that bench, and, and to be honest, I think what's going to happen is it is going to be the CNC down the road. But the reason I say the bench is because I, you guys know, um, I sourced the materials at work, so I was able to, to get that. But I had been thinking about that for a very long time. Um, we, we spoke about doing the CNC afterwards, but as that was going on, I still had this bench in mind. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you say med scientist, I guess maybe I just, I see it a little differently. I will literally look at something and say, okay, how can I make that better? I don't know if that's the definition of a maker. I know for me, that's, that's how I see a lot of things. Um, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily start with the idea. I usually take something and then build off of it. Um, that's how I, that's how I do a lot of things. Go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry. You don't just do that with projects. You do it with people too, because you've touched our lives in this podcast in a, a tremendous way and helped us out a lot. So you're not just a mad scientist when it comes to your projects. You are a, a saint. Just going around touching everyone people. everyone around you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I want. That's what I want. Be careful when you do that with me. That's what I want everybody to take away from that. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. But, but I mean, dude. Like you, you see these maker community project flags in the background, you know, the whole community over competition, dude, you are definitely mm -hmm. a huge influencer. I say in the community and just a big help to those in the community. If there could be not necessarily like giving stuff away and like helping us achieve like greatness, but just the fact that you're so forthcoming on helping people that I think is. I don't think it has anything to do with giving to anybody. I think it has to do with taking the time and, helping somebody out. You know, I can, I can, I can give you a tool. It doesn't mean that you know how to use it. doesn't mean that, you know, you know, that's, that has nothing to do with it. And that's why I listen to you guys. And I, I sit there and I see what you're doing. I love the podcast because I mean, you don't hesitate to say, Hey, you know, I'll give you a hand. I'll call you up, you know, Josh, Nick, now everybody, you know, you guys have listened to me countless times, you know, and I, 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 I love it. You know, I love the, the podcast, what you guys have done so far, and I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate you, you having me on here. To me, I don't see myself as somebody that even should be on a podcast at this point, but I, I do appreciate you taking the time and talking to me. This podcast is meant for every maker out there, from the small accounts to the large accounts, for the medium, people just starting out, people doing it for years. That's what we built here. It's a place of community, so it doesn't matter – you know what your account size is or experience level. Is. Oh God, Nick! <laughs> Nick starts chuckling. You already know he took that into far left field. Look, guys, come on, come on! Uh, but oh yeah, we do. We do. We, I know you. Love we appreciate today. you coming on, though. It, it's cool to have you know makers that we talk to on a regular basis come on the show, and um, but to finish to go well, again, you're going to be talking to me a lot more. I got that. I got that lady. Hey, and I'm ready. You're going to need a lot of help. I'm ready. <laughs> but I would say. I'm, I can't even tell you what it took to get that thing up on the bench. Oh, I can only imagine. Surprise it. You break your back. <laughs> oh, that I thing. can only imagine. Not light. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> I think Victor kind of hit the, the question nail on the head, though. Honestly, there's not much you can really reiterate on it is figure out what you yeah, want to make, did. figure out which direction you want to go. Now, so that way you don't you put yourself in financial issues because this particular hobby if you will will definitely put you in those if you're not having some kind of uh income because there's still a business slash like i need to make something back side of the house uh, uh when you buy stuff like that he made a comment that actually resonated a little bit more too is you don't need the best of the best tools to accomplish what you want to accomplish especially if you don't know if this is going to become a business or what have you you know we said it before we'll say it again we see makers out there with the basic tools, making amazing things, making stuff better than myself. Um, it, it, for us, it's more at this point is about is trying to get as good quality as we can and at a good, decent pace because of, you know, the businesses that we're running. But that's not the goal for you. That's perfectly fine. You know, get a tool every once in a while, learn that tool, become a master on that tool and uh, just grow. Agreed. Nick, um, you got anything to add to that? No, 
I mean, now the way things are now with the, where we're at in the podcast and we have a solid, solid community to draw from and it's just like a giant database. So if you don't know how to do something or you yeah. don't, you don't Apologies. know where to get something or you want to talk about a process, the best part about it is if YouTube fails you, guess what? You've got thousands of people well, for us, hundreds of people, right? That you can ask and people will respond. And that's the best part about it. So, Victor, you like embody the whole uh, community over competition um, concept to a T, man. And personally, I have to thank you. You helped me out uh, more than one time. And uh, I, you know, I'm in your debt, sir. But uh, other than that, though, the, out of like basically out of many comes you know we can we can pull whatever we need so and it's not it's not abuse either it's we're not abusing each other like relying on somebody to get the information just to like get ahead it's all it's all even keel across the board where everybody is is uh, co- a contributor so that being said that's all i got uh you guys uh if i can yeah, go ahead nick i'm sorry if i I just want to add to that, and I can I can say to everybody out there, ask these three guys. Uh, seriously, I, I can't say it enough. I mean, they've helped me many a times, and you know, you don't know what you don't know. You guys have said it, and it's true. You know, and I can only I can only tell you from experience. I'm starting on my journey. I know that I'm going to go places with it, and it's because of these three guys here, and and everybody else out there. I don't want to. There's a lot of people out there, you know, um, that contribute. And, and that's why, I mean, all these different podcasts, you know, if you can't pick something up across the board. Heck yeah. I think we answered that question. <laughs> do you want, do you want to wrap up or do you want, we got time for one more? Yeah. So once again, we want to thank our sponsors for, uh, bringing us to you. So, Thanks to PWNCNC. Check them out, pwncnc.com, for all of your aftermarket CNC needs, i.e. spindle kits and other good shenanigans. Uh, Use promo code SAWDUSTNATION981 if you want 5% off your order. And that that includes everything on the website. Uh, Second, we want to thank Total Boat. Thank you for your continued support. If you want to... 10% 10% off promo code for Total Boat. Shoot us an email or hit us up in the DMs. And last but not least, welcome to our two new uh, patrons, uh, Ron Childress from Splinter Customs and Matt Wackerly from Wacky Works. We appreciate you guys and the rest of our patrons for supporting us. And um, other than that, that's our sponsors. Over to you, Nap. Hey, yeah. So if you're listening to us on that uh, old Apple podcast, which is where a lot of you do listen from, or any of those other podcast catchers, go ahead and give us five stars. Let us know how we did. And if you don't give us five stars, let us know why you didn't give us five stars because we can't give you the content you want if you don't tell us what you want. Because that's Give it to me. <laughs> you got to tell us what you want, what you really, really want. But yeah, give give us that feedback because without the feedback, we can't really do much for you. Uh, and if you you know want to get a hold of us for other stuff, you got the DMs, you got that uh, email that Josh is going to tell you about. So Josh, how can they get a hold of us? Well, first, I want to tell you how to get a hold of Victor here from Wind Designs. You can hit him up on Instagram. He's a wealth of knowledge himself. He is. And you know what? He's a he's a fart smeller. Ask him a question. He's a fart smeller. I mean, smart feller. Go ahead, Nick. (laughs) Such a dork. What? (laughs) Hit him up. Ask him a question. You know, ask about his new project. I mean, that alone is a is worth a conversation. If you're looking to get a hold of any of us three, you could do it by getting a hold of the Sawdust Nation podcast page on Instagram, and you never know who you're going to get. But of course, <laughs> you'll find out soon. Just message. <laughs> um, you can get hold of Nick from MPG Creations. He'll try his best to answer any questions you have. If not, just be careful. That mustache. Is a talks by itself. It just moving on to <laughs> Nap's Naughty Works. Nap over here, he's the laser guru. You can hit him up and he'll try to answer any questions you might have as well. And then myself, North Country Woodworking, Josh here, and uh, you know, love to chat 
answer questions, whatever you got. Um, you can also send topic ideas, pictures of your latest project. If you have questions about the giveaway, we'll be happy to answer them. Just go ahead and shoot us an email at celldestinationpodcast at gmail.com. And with that, let's start wrapping this up. Let's, uh, Victor, you got any last words, man? Um, go over, go over, to, head over to my site and see what's, uh, what designs are in my mind. And uh, I'd like to see what you guys come up with. I'd like to see what designs are in your mind. All right. Uh, so nice. my final words are just as normal. You know, take care of each other, folks, because uh, at the end of the day, we are all about the community, whether it's just having uh, some of the thoughts or even if you're just listening to the podcast. And I got to insert this comment from old Tim from Gears and Fire. Uh, he put, I wait to listen uh, to the podcast until I'm in my shop. I'm generally alone, generally alone in there. So it's nice to have a small feeling of, uh, of a companion in the shop with them. So that right there just tells you that this particular podcast for Tim is awesome because he can just feel like someone's there with him while he's in a shop. Uh, and it's just things just like that uh, that help us as uh, makers get going in the go, get going in the shop i mean shoot sometimes i don't want to get out there but if it's just to listen to a podcast and you know have someone and that feeling of someone being out there with you that's that's pretty awesome uh but yeah take care of each other folks because uh, at the end of the day it's a community over competition so nick what you got yeah hey so folks if you didn't know victor's a very smart guy he uh he's a computer guy um i i had some issues and he helped me out he actually explained to me that a dongle wasn't a uh a dirty word so um i'm 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 serious i didn't know i didn't know anyway i thought he was i thought he was being cheeky but no apparently it's not anyway but uh with that being said uh take care of yourselves and each other and if you are in the atlanta area and you are looking for something to do head on over to swing and richards and they will take care of you all right folks josh that explains a lot moving on uh, thank you, Victor, for coming on today and joining us Thanks, for the live man. in the podcast. We really appreciate you uh, jumping on here and uh, for everything you do. I'm just waiting for my kid to jump in now. <laughs> um, with that, thank you for listening to episode 88, where we hit on our shops, Victor's shop, Workbench Con, and just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, hopefully, you can listen you know, on your way to work, at work, you know, in the morning, making coffee, wherever you listen. We hope that you enjoy as much as we enjoy making this podcast for you. The community is why we do it and we'll continue to do it. So if you have any feedback, make sure you hit us up with honest feedback because we can't grow unless you tell us what you think. Um, With that, get in your shops, make some sawdust. And with that, all four of us, Sawdust Nation, out. out. And Nick was muted the entire time. Good episode, guys. Well, it worked out that way. But one more very important part, just for our patrons. 